Okay. Um, so good morning, everyone. Welcome back to this class on believers' authority, deliverance, uh, demonology. We'll pray and uh, get started. Um, so let me let me begin with a word of prayer. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that, uh, Lord, you've made us in your own image. Father, you've given us authority. Lord, even through Jesus, Father, we thank you that the victory has been won. Father, we pray that as we talk about uh, the very um, different aspects of uh, authority, that we will gain understanding. And not just that, Lord, let your authority flow through our lives, Father. Let your victory be seen in our lives. And Lord, help us, O oh God, to enforce this victory in the lives of uh, people around us. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this privilege. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, so in the last class, we've understood about authority. We also understood that uh, when God created human beings, he already gave us the authority, but uh, sin corrupted the world. And therefore, we lost authority to Satan. But thank God for Jesus. He has done the redeeming work. And now that authority has been restored to us. So uh, a little deeper into uh, you know all this authority and uh, the spiritual realm, um, you know, today we will get into a couple of aspects where we will understand the influence of the spirit world on the natural world. Okay, so we are looking at different, you know, bits and pieces, but it'll all eventually come together. So just stay with me. Um, so far, you know, we recognized about our authority. Now, a little bit of understanding about the spiritual realm is also essential. So what we see is there are two kingdoms. There is the kingdom of darkness. Uh, kingdom of darkness refers to Satan and his demonic powers. There's the kingdom of light. The kingdom of light refers to the Lord Jesus and, um, you know, Jesus the angels and all of us who are born again, we belong to the kingdom of light. Now, these two kingdoms exist. And we have to understand that the kingdom of light is way more powerful than the kingdom of darkness. So uh, this subject, this course is about deliverance and demonology. Somewhere it sparks a little bit of interest because there are many unanswered questions that people have about the spiritual realm and about the kingdom of darkness. But even before we discuss anything about the kingdom of darkness, I want to share with us that as far as the, uh, the Bible is concerned, it gives us great clarity that the kingdom of light is way greater, way powerful compared to the kingdom of darkness. Okay, So yes, we must have interest about, hey, what goes on in the kingdom of darkness and demons and all, but it shouldn't be an unhealthy interest. We must know enough to overcome and gain victory on the paths of darkness, not more than that, you know, more than that is not required, actually, because we would rather spend all our energy understanding the kingdom of light and only as much as required regarding the kingdom of darkness. Okay, So our interest is good, but we shouldn't develop an unhealthy interest. So uh, this is, is quite clear now. There are two kingdoms, kingdom of light, kingdom of darkness. In the spirit world, okay, there are things that uh, take place. And the spirit world, I'm referring to both of these kingdoms as the spirit world. The spirit world, uh, it influences or it has a bearing on the natural world. Whether it is the kingdom of light or whether it is the kingdom of darkness, it can influence the natural world. What is the natural world? The natural world is what you and I live in. 
what we experience, the realities um, of, of our everyday life and what we can sense, what we can touch, what we can feel. That is the natural world. So what we are saying is the spirit world can influence the natural world, both the kingdom of light as well as the kingdom of darkness. So how exactly you know, can um, these kingdoms influence us? So what we're going to do right now is we will just uh, look at the influence of the, the, the kingdom of darkness. OK, so kingdom of light, yes, we, we will talk more about it a little later on. But just for our understanding, you know, how how is it that the kingdom of darkness can actually uh, influence or have a bearing on us? So just just yesterday, in fact, you know, I, uh, I was talking to one of our uh, um, outreach pastors and he shared this uh, in he shared this incident with me. He said that uh, um, among his youth, there was one girl who suddenly fainted. And you know, she was uh, behaving very different compared to her usual self. And so the moment such a thing happened, he recognized that this was some sort of a demonic spirit. So they all began to pray and everything, but uh, uh, they didn't see a breakthrough so he felt why not have one of his friends also uh, pray for this this girl and on the phone he called up you know another one of uh, our pastors and uh, put that pastor on speaker <coughs> and he was telling me um, that pastor went on praying i think for more than one hour or something like that and uh, this girl started manifesting Okay, so she started manifesting, and uh, she uh, eventually, you know, she fell down, and all those things that happened, right? Like the spirit actually left her, uh, and uh, so the pastor was in such great amazement that the authority of the kingdom, okay, he saw that demonstrated, and this girl is not even a strong believer, uh, and she lives with many other unbelievers in her room. So it seems from the time this happened, all the students around her are very interested about God. They're like, how can this happen? You know, that uh, uh, someone prays, and in this case, even prays on the phone, and the demon left. The demon spirit actually left. So you see the way the power of God uh, was released in this particular circumstance. Right? that the demonic spirit had to leave uh, when prayed in the name of Jesus. So the spirit realm can have an influence. This girl being possessed by demons is what? Nothing but influence of the spirit of the, the, um, uh, you know, the kingdom of darkness. But in the name of Jesus, this demon spirit being cast out is what? It is the the power, the influence of the kingdom of light on the works of darkness. So you see, the spirit realm, it can influence. So how exactly does this influence happen? So as we talk about, uh, you know, particularly the, the kingdom of darkness, you see, there can be times when through individuals, the spirit realm influences the natural realm okay so there are many such examples in in the bible so uh, when we look at the book of acts there is a time when uh, paul goes to philippi okay? he goes to philippi and in philippi there is a girl who is possessed by demons and she is she has a spirit of what we call divination. So she's able to tell future and you know do different things. Uh, but ultimately, Paul casts out that spirit. So what was going on through an individual, right? People were being influenced. Now this girl going on sharing so-called you know future telling and different things, it's influencing the community where she is living. So through individuals, it's possible that you know the demonic realm tries to influence the 
natural realm. Now, uh, there can be an influence of the, the kingdom of darkness even over circumstances and situations. The classic example is, think about the time when Jesus was on the boat with his disciples. Okay, so he is journeying uh, with his disciples. And what happens? There is a storm. right? So if the storm was just something that God wanted to do, Obviously, Jesus will not go against what God wants to do, right? But what did Jesus do? He rebuked the storm. So that tells us that there is another kingdom at play. And which is why the kingdom of light is going against the kingdom of darkness. And so Jesus rebukes this circumstance. What is the circumstance? There is a storm. And because of the storm, the, uh, the people who are... Now, on the boat, they might have been delayed, or there was also the risk of them drowning, isn't it? So what does Satan do sometimes, or the kingdom of darkness do sometimes? He tries to influence circumstances, maybe a delay, or some confusion, or you know something that can happen in our situation. And we are wondering, but why is this happening? You know, it should, it's supposed to be smooth, it's supposed to be simple. The kingdom of darkness can influence our circumstances and situations. Now, we must be able to discern and recognize not everything, not every delay is from the devil, isn't it? Like, uh, let's take, for example, we are all going through Bible college. And it's taking a while before we actually step out you know, into whatever, full-time ministry or as a, a business entrepreneur because God is calling you, whatever you want to do. But that delay is not necessarily Satan trying to stop us. It's God's preparation time in our lives. And he is helping shape us, build us, equip us in the word of God and strengthen us. So not everything in our situation or circumstance is the devil or kingdom of darkness. But yes, there can be times when the kingdom of darkness tries to hinder through circumstances and situations. So when we discern, like Jesus, Jesus understood, oh, this storm, it's not from uh, the Father. So let me rebuke it. Uh, you know, peace be still. The moment he rebuked, the storm was stilled. So in the same way, we must identify are our circumstances and situations being influenced. Then let's move on. Please feel free to ask questions at any point, because I know this subject, uh, you may have a lot of questions. Okay. So moving right along, world systems. So we notice that <coughs> there can be systems that are also influenced by um, the kingdom of darkness. Now, let's take, for example, Paul in um, Ephesus. Okay, So Paul, he goes to this place called Ephesus. And over there, we read that there was already a certain system Okay, of worship, which was established. So there was the goddess Diana, there was her very famous temple, and there was uh, incredible, you know, a promiscuity or uh, immorality that people were living in. Uh, and also, uh, there, there was a lot of sorcery, sorcery, right, uh, in that particular city as well. So these were all influences on the way of living of that particular region. So the systems in that place, you could say, were influenced. Similarly, Corinth, you can talk about you know, different things that existed in, in the city of Corinth. So even today, there can be systems. There can be world systems. When we say world systems, uh, there can be the influence of the kingdom of darkness in uh, the area of government 
or let's say business or let's say education okay so we must be able to discern hey let, just take for example business in a particular region if business is going on and we notice that there is incredible corruption okay there's no justice uh, in in the way the system functions uh, to some extent yes these are the decisions of people um, you know when when we make righteous decisions as believers we are living in the spirit but when we make unrighteous decisions what are we living in opposite of living in the spirit is <coughs> sorry kingdom of darkness okay can we say flesh we're living in the flesh okay we are either we have a choice we live by the spirit or we live by the flesh so to some extent it's true as human beings we make the decision you know to uh, live in our flesh and what does our flesh want uh, flesh is greedy flesh wants pleasure flesh wants you know uh, everything to be easy pride self all that and so we yield to it so to some extent that is the reason why corruption may be existing in that business system but after a while what happens is you know we will talk about this later we say open doors okay so when there are open doors after some time it's no longer just the decisions of the flesh but demonic spirits can begin to energize the wrong activity so it becomes spiritually empowered so there can be a strong demonic influence behind the corruption in a particular business system similarly you know take ed education or the field of art for some time you know people are playing music and uh, they just singing songs about you know just pride and life and pleasure okay this this is a human decision but the more we go in that line and we uh, you know are are moving away from honoring god and honoring the truth what happens we are opening the door to influences right and what happens the system we could say hey this is art this is culture um uh, this is fashion different systems <coughs> they can actually start getting empowered by the spiritual realm the wrong influence so <coughs> we have seen so far that there is a spirit world and the spirit world can influence the natural world it can happen through we said individuals it can also happen through circumstances situations it can happen through world systems <coughs> and it can happen in regions now when i gave um, the earlier examples i mentioned you know the city of ephesus so what is this it's a region it's a geographical region the entire region is filled with sorcery okay so we might ask the question hey how come the whole region they are into witchcraft they are into black magic they are into sorcery so when finally paul ministers there we read that all those who repented they brought all their items you know the black magic uh, kind of items and they burnt it okay it was worth many many it was worth a lot of money but they repented they no longer wanted to associate with uh, those occultic practices instead they wanted to worship god so a geographical region of ephesus has the influence of sorcery so similarly as you look at you know different cities there's the the city of athens we read about athens over there what is the the primary thing intellectualism right 
people just want to talk about new philosophies, discussion, humanism. So there's a different influence on another city. So similarly, we notice that it is possible for regions or spaces, cities, territories to have a particular influence. Okay. Now, uh, it can be, uh, as we said, sorcery, or it can be uh, some sort of a philosophy that they are influenced by which is against God, or it could be alcoholism, it could be, um, you know, uh, corruption that we mentioned earlier. It could be so many other evil things which are actually empowered by the, uh, the world of darkness, the spirit kingdom of darkness. So this is how we begin to discern uh, what is actually going on. So cultural forms. This also, I'm sure we are already aware, you know, music, dance, uh, poetry, um, sculpt sculpture. Can they be influenced uh, and influenced by the kingdom of darkness? Yes, they can be. So as you look at the expression of the art and, you know, cultural forms, we may notice that it is so against God. How did it happen? Yes, to some extent, people decided to do it. But when they continue to go against God, you know, they can start being empowered by demonic spirits. And then you know, you're know you amazed with the kind of stuff that people write, the kind of music that they write. You know, I've heard uh, of uh, crazy things that um, people heard uh, some music, and now they're being tormented. They cannot sleep in the night. Or uh, you know, people heard some music, and it uh, just cause them to be depressed and they're making bad choices in their life. So many crazy things are actually happening because it's beyond just, um, you know, a, a sort of a human influence. Now it has come into the range of a demonic influence. Okay. So we must be able to discern when these things actually happen. Even organizations and institutions it is possible that certain organizations you know they may form with the idea of promoting uh, some ungodly practices or uh, you know um, uh, bringing down the the knowledge of god and they themselves could be they could have dedicated themselves as an organization or an institution to these demonic forces. You know, sometimes some organizations are directly dedicated to, oh, they are dedicated to this spirit and that spirit. So then what happens? They become an expression of that particular spirit, right? So uh, that's how the influence happens in the natural realm. We can also see that sometimes buildings, spaces, homes, and objects can also be influenced by demonic powers. So you know, you look at a particular space. If that space has been, uh, we'll see later, how exactly can we form that influence? We, we'll talk about it. How to engage the spirit world that we will talk about uh, just in a few minutes. But it's possible that a given space has been dedicated to the demonic. Like as soon as you enter, you can sense uh, that, hey, something is wrong. Uh, I'm, I don't feel at peace, you know. Uh, so a space can be dedicated. Sometimes there are objects, OK? Um, we, we see, like in the Old Testament, we see God telling the people, don't take those objects of worship of other gods. Just destroy them. Don't even take it. The reason is, many a time, you know, uh, demons can, um, you know, they can latch on to or they can dwell in some of these objects. And when we take those objects, it's, it's like saying, OK, you come with me. And we take the demon along. Okay, so these are the dangers. So these are all ways in which uh, the kingdom of darkness can actually influence us. So how exactly do people end up engaging the demonic? 
in uh, in the natural world so what is once again i just want to reiterate why are we talking about all these things it's not to create some sort of an unhealthy interest uh, in in researching the demonic not at all it's for us to understand oh this is how it works and this is what uh, the word of god says about the power of the cross and the power of the holy spirit and this is the way in which we can overcome all these negative influences so that is the uh, motivation with which we are discussing these topics so coming right back to what i was saying there are certain ways in which people engage the spirit world okay so it's like saying in other words invite the spirit world to come and influence so how is it that people are inviting or engaging the demonic into the natural world so a couple of things for us to understand first one is through disciplines okay disciplines what are disciplines disciplines are regular practices they can even be daily practices that people follow what are some of the daily practices so there are practices such as prayer uh, incantations incantations means you know like you chant you say some things right you chant and you invite the spirits there are uh, practices of worship there can also be practices of meditation when you meditate on something right which is definitely not godly then what happens that can invite demonic spirits so meditation uh, there can be uh, even certain lifestyles that people adopt you know we've seen <coughs> in the uh like biblical uh, times even during like the first century when the church was alive there were morally wrong lifestyles that people were caught in like even in the city of corinth you know uh, wrong sexual relationships prostitution as temple worship so these kind of practices right lifestyles they also open the door for the demonic to come and influence okay so not just uh, uh, immoral uh, sexual behavior but there can be uh, things like uh, things that have to do with uh, some sort of addictive uh, habits uh, you know um, addictive things that we do we say uh, it's part of our lifestyle when it becomes a part of our lifestyle you know these these regular sort of practices and habits what do they do they open the door for demons for demons to come okay which is why when one becomes a believer we say repent and renounce leave these things leave these practices if you were involved in some sort of you know meditation some sort of prayer some sort of worship which is not unto the lord jesus christ you need to get it out of your life otherwise what happens the door is still open through the practice through the lifestyle for the spirit world to influence so disciplines we have to be very careful you know sometimes believers say are nothing will happen what will happen i'm already in christ i'm already saved i'm redeemed nothing will happen but you notice there are these doors that the demonic demonic realm uses to get into the circumstances uh, and the systems right to influence the lives of people and so we have to be very careful uh, sometimes some music uh, some some you know people say oh yeah you can say anything it doesn't matter no life and death is in the power of the tongue we have to be very careful about you know what we uh, what we speak and uh, what what we um say words of worship that come out of our mouth because uh, it there is a chance for the demonic realm to actually begin to influence so disciplines okay Th these are some things that we have to be careful about now next is dedication 
okay dedication so what is dedication um, there is a passage given in our notes from deuteronomy 7 verses 25 and 26 um, i'll quickly read it for us it says you shall burn the carved images of their gods with fire you shall not covet the silver or gold that is on them nor take it for yourselves lest you be snared by it for it is an abomination to the lord your god nor shall you bring an abomination into your house lest you be doomed to destruction like it you shall utterly detest it and utterly abhor it for it is an accursed thing so even uh, under the old covenant god told his people um, not to have anything to do with something which is dedicated to other gods. So in this case, what is he talking about? He's talking about some objects. Those objects had silver and gold and you know those were objects of worship. So he says, don't touch them, just burn them, don't bring them into your house. They are an abomination. Um, you know, those things are accursed. So have nothing to do with them. Why did God say that? Because these objects or which have been dedicated to other gods, they form an open door for the demonic spirits. Now, not just objects. Um, we can have sometimes music which is dedicated. So the moment you have that music playing, what happens? That it's an invitation to demon spirits. You can have certain dance forms which are dedicated to certain gods. They also can be an open door inviting demon spirits to come. Um, you can have you know, many other things. We already said uh, lands, buildings, spaces, activities, certain activities. You know, people engage uh, in, in, in some, some sort of something that they do together, which is ungodly. Even that can become a, a, a way in which you know, demon spirits can enter. So any form of dedication to um, other gods uh, actually becomes an open door and demons use it as an expression. Now, I don't know if you have ever seen this, but I have <coughs> seen it on TV. You know, there are some people who are dedicated to certain gods. And when their festivals come, uh, they, they fast and they do all sorts of uh, activities to make themselves ready to get the spirit on them. Right. So uh, you must have seen it. So then the spirit comes on them and they, they behave very different uh, as compared to their normal selves. They might even do some things which are unusual. Right beyond their physical capacity, they are able to do some very crazy things. Uh, but how is it possible? How is it possible? Because the individual has dedicated all their faculties to a spirit or a set of spirits. So then what happens? When there is a dedication, those spirits can actually use everything for themselves. Okay, so when, I, when I'm saying I'm dedicating myself or I'm dedicating my child, sometimes parents do that. You know, when they're not in Christ, they dedicate their children to certain gods or grandparents, they do that. They take the grandchild, put the child in the temple or someplace and they say, okay, I'm dedicating uh, my grandchild to the god of whatever. You know, you might say the god of intelligence or the god of strength, whatever, whatever they choose. So what is this dedication? Dedication is nothing but one offering everything to a certain God or spirit. So then whoever is dedicated becomes an expression of that spirit. You got it? So this is in the negative sense. So as I told you, a person who has dedicated themselves and calls the spirit, then the spirit comes and it behaves the way it's used to behaving. You know, maybe drink a lot of alcohol or something crazy like that. You know, break things. 
which which is what the spirit will express itself as uh, because that's what the spirit desires so the person has now become what an expression of that spirit now when children are dedicated grandchildren what are what are the parents saying or the grand they are saying okay come you spirits you can take over you can express yourself through my child my son my daughter my granddaughter my grandson or whatever is dedicated right so this is the negative aspect of it but here's the positive aspect what is the positive aspect you and i as believers of the lord jesus christ what do we say we say one must dedicate themselves to god okay we must remember when we talked about prayer we said there is a prayer of consecration in which what are we saying god i give myself to you i give every part of who i am to you i give my thinking to you i give my voice to you i give my strength to you so when i dedicate myself or i consecrate myself unto the lord the same thing applies i become an expression of god and his work right so then what happens each one of us we can release the anointing of god through our lives because now what has happened my life is dedicated to christ so who can who am i inviting christ right my life is dedicated to the holy spirit then who am i inviting the work of the holy spirit so i become a channel or i become an expression of god and his work so you see the good and the bad side of dedication so when one is dedicated to the kingdom of darkness they become an expression of the kingdom of darkness but if one is dedicated to the kingdom of light who do we become an expression of the kingdom of light so dedications can engage the spirit realm yes uh, prince you have a question yes yes yeah definitely see if now as a believer um i i have a lifestyle where every day i take time to pray every day i take time to read the word see what's happening i'm inviting the holy spirit all the time so i'm having that influence that spiritual influence in my life and what is it doing to me i'm being transformed personally i'm being cleansed so it works both ways it works yeah correct so we should let go of the um the wrong lifestyle the old lifestyle and develop a new lifestyle discipline okay good so disciplines we understood they can open the door uh, then we said dedication can also do that now here's the third one through which people engage the demonic realm sacrifices okay um now somehow people all around the globe understand this no matter which community they belong to uh, there is an importance for sacrifice that somebody has to sacrifice okay yeah so uh, if if uh, unfortunately there are places where they still do crazy things like human sacrifices and all but otherwise they do animal sacrifices right why because they want to gain the forgiveness and the favor of the so called spiritual forces that they are praying to uh, and so a lot of people practice sacrifice even sacrifice kind of uh, it's similar to dedication only where you know one is uh, uh, one is becoming a channel for the work of the spirit you see what uh, paul says in corinthians first corinthians 10 very interesting verses 19 through 21 he says what am i saying then that an idol is anything or what is offered to idols is anything rather that the things which the gentiles sacrifice who are they sacrificing to they sacrifice to demons and not to god and i do not want you to have fellowship with demons 
You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. So uh, in Corinth, there was a lot of uh, worship of you know other, other pagan gods. And many people had become believers also. So Paul is giving them clarity. He's saying, look, when they are worshiping those um, you know, objects which they have made, their sacrifices are not going just to the objects. But who is it going to? Demons. Right? So what does Satan want? He wants worship. Right? So that is the way even the demons function. They want worship. So that's the reason. So they want sacrifice. They want all the disciplines. And they want just give. And they take it because it's being sacrificed to demons. And so Paul is warning them and saying that don't eat uh, and, and don't uh, share uh, you know, in those, in those um, uh, things which are offered to uh, uh, demons. Okay? So even sacrifices actually open the door. So sometimes people offer material things. What are material things? Uh, okay, I have some fruits. I will sacrifice them. I will offer it up. Or I have some grain. I will offer it up. I have some money. I will. So there can be material things which are offered up to uh, demons. There can also be um, the shedding of blood. You know, sometimes people uh, shed blood to to give sacrifice because demons desire these things. They want it. Okay, uh, as as worship to them, uh, and I've already mentioned human sacrifice is also something in the Word of God. We see in the Old Testament <coughs> that there was a king of Moab in Second Kings chapter three, who sac who offered his firstborn son on the city wall, and it was not good in God's sight. You know, God was never happy about uh, such a thing, but you know, people followed all these practices to worship their gods. Um, and uh, these sacrifices open the door for influence. But we thank God that the Father sent his son, the Lord Jesus, and the Lord Jesus of his own will, you know, sacrificed his life to break the influence of all the other sacrifices. Amen. And so that is the greatest sacrifice ever, that God, his only son, his firstborn, would shed his blood and you know, redeem us from our sins, that God has already given us the greatest sacrifice. Okay, So sacrifice is one of the ways in which the demonic realm can be engaged. Uh, and of course, you know, rituals and religious practices. So all kinds of things people do, you know, some, some activities that they might do to invite these demonic spirits. So these are all ways in which, uh, you know, the demonic realm can influence. So I think I will stop here. And uh, the next class, uh, I will touch upon the spirit world and how it recognizes uh, the authority. And we'll talk a little bit more about power and authority and see if we can uh, move further into chapter 2. So at this point, if there are any questions, uh, it'll be nice to address them. Yes, yes, Francis. Hmm. Yeah. So Francis' question is: uh, Some people use martial arts for worship. Can that also be considered as dedication? Yes. Yeah. Any form of art can be considered, can be used for dedication. Uh, sorry. Can you come again? OK, so see, uh, that's a good question also, what Francis is saying. See, uh, maybe there are people who practice a certain martial art, but they, in their mind, they have no nothing to do with gods or worship. They're just doing the martial art. 
right is it okay are you are you saying that so what we would say is if anything has its origin in the occult in worship of spirits or you know certain gods it's best to stay away from it okay the reason is uh it has originated for the sake of worship so there there can be parts of that particular uh, art form or worship uh, that can have a negative influence so it's best to stay away from it yeah yes hmm yeah okay Okay, good question. So, uh, Prince is saying that uh, when a believer uh, opens the door for some sort of a demonic influence, uh, what will happen when they die? Because uh, they were influenced, you know, in their in their habits or behavior by that particular demonic uh, power. So one thing we have to get clear, Prince, is that a believer cannot be possessed by demons. We cannot be possessed by demons, okay? Because we are possessed by the Holy Spirit. So anyone who is in Christ, born again, you and I can never be possessed by demons. We should never say, believer is possessed. This believer is possessed. That's a wrong theology. We should never say that. But we can use the word demonized. Okay, Demonized means that they are being influenced. Because they have given the permission, they are being demonized. So when such a person may die, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think God takes away salvation. So uh, yeah, right and wrong has been done in life, but uh, uh, I think they will go to heaven. God doesn't take away uh, salvation unless they give it up. Right. So good questions. Any other thoughts? It's good to understand what we are studying. OK, good. So uh, uh, Anand is asking, uh, what is the difference between demonized and demon possessed? Demon possessed is a term we use for unbelievers. They don't have the Holy Spirit in them. So demon spirits can go and live in them. So de demon possessed is only used for unbelievers. Demonized is influenced at whatever level um, and we use that term for believers a believer can be demonized but an unbeliever can be demon possessed Correct. So uh, when we say demonized, a believer is demonized. So usually, think of it like this, OK? This is how uh, I think of it. In the mind, OK? You can, you can think of, uh, like, demons come when there are strongholds in our lives. Let's just say, for example, I have, a, uh, I have this habit of uh, lying and uh, you know cheating as a believer and god has convicted me many times but i don't want to change i'm still lying cheating it's part of my life i'm continuing the same way <coughs> and in my mind i have justified nothing is wrong with me so what's happening a stronghold is being built in my mind where i'm a believer but i'm a lying cheating believer okay and what happens is 
when you think of a stronghold a stronghold is like a fortress you would have seen in some of the cities no the old kings they have built walls uh, uh, so it's like a fortress so in my mind there is a fortress stronghold so demons cannot come and live in my spirit because i holy spirit is there in me okay i'm still a praying tongue talking worshiping believer but in the stronghold the demon can come and sit understood so because i have given permission in the stronghold and it is protected it's already protected in the stronghold till i break the if i break the stronghold there's no place for the demon but if i don't play, break the strong, stronghold in my mind full influence by the demonic demonic spirit so that is demonized yeah mainly our minds mainly they try to manipulate us because uh, that's the only way they can have victory in a believer's life by manipulation okay all right okay good good uh, food for thought uh, i would encourage you to please read uh, revise your notes again and if you have any questions i know all of you are on google classroom isn't it you registered just post your questions on the stream page we can address it okay so let's uh, close with a word of prayer today and thank you everyone for joining um so anyone would like to lead in prayer rin take this mic and pray Lord, I thank you for this day. Thank you, Jesus, for the time that we had um, here, Lord, uh, in learning about um, the, um, the realms that are um, there. And uh, Lord, I pray that you fill us with boldness and conf confidence to face those uh, demonic um, um, spirits uh, that uh, are existing and the influence that's there, Lord Jesus. I pray that uh, you will strengthen us and that you. Um, uh, that you're always with us, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Father God, for your word and that um, it's speaking to us and um, it's um, it's changing us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Uh, so thank you, everyone. We'll connect again next week. Until then, uh, take care. God bless.